So there's going to be a Hilton in orbit. Like the hotel? Exactly. So to, to be able to what, have a hotel there? Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a hotel. Yes. I've seen that. Is that the one that's rotating? Uh, so the, that's that it really... will be rotating just so there's some sort of well, gravity so you don't yeah. like float around. The value of the space stations, I think it's like a lot of a lot of us are like, why is that? Who cares? Right. Well, it matters because I think they're researching mm -hmm. things that will benefit us yep. massively on Earth, like cancer, like stem yep. cell research, like 3D printing organs. Is that kind well, of what so they're doing? Well, so that's the thing is because the environment is so different up there, and it mm -hmm. there's been so many instances where experimenters have sent something up, whether it was a you know growing a tomato or figuring out what happens with alcohol, and mm. the results they got back were weird and different. Bubbles will really mess you up. So champagne, beer, because of so. Here on the ground, when we drink those, the carbonation in the bubbles will like settle into our stomach and you'll still burp, but like it'll be contained in space. Wow. It doesn't sink. As far as the 3D printing of organs, that kind of shit is like sci-fi. Like people, myself included, like don't know that this is all going on and it's life changing, right? Like you can literally save lives all over the world with that. So what's up with, with this yeah, project? Yeah, so... For years now, there's been attempts to 3D print organs here on the ground. And people don't know how a 3D printer works. That's fine. I only found out when I got one for my daughter. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially just laying one layer of material up and down as well as left and right. And so for old people who remember like the inkjet printers where it just went back and forth and painted the page, this is yeah, back and forth yeah. painting but it's like a plastic or metal, so it's also going up and down. And so they've been trying to do this with organs using like human organ tissue or animal organ tissue. And they kept running into the problem of it doesn't hold itself up. It's like squishy. And what typically holds our organs together is something that's not squishy. But essentially there's a, there's a <laughs> lattice, there's an architecture of muscle and cartilage that keeps the, the actual organ tissue from just collapsing into jelly. But when you 3D print it, you can't, you don't have that. And so they've tried a bunch of different things to add that artificial structure and it's never quite worked. With, they, they were able to do it with a couple organs that were relatively simple. But what they found in space is you're able to do this uh, and basically 3D print or lab grow these organs and there's no downward pressure. So they don't collapse. And so they found they were able to print them and let them heal, essentially, heal and coalesce into something usable. And they haven't done this with a whole organ. They did like a piece of a, I think it was a liver. Like it worked. And so now it's just a matter of yeah. scaling it up to do an entire thing. And you're right. Like that's the sort of thing that is super exciting for people everywhere can very well get to the point where it's like, hey, borderline could be an elective surgery, getting a new organ instead of waiting right. for someone to die, which is a little little morbid. Right, yeah, so they're taking organs, like I'd be curious how they take the organ to print it, because it makes sense with rockets, right? They're 3D printing rockets, like you're printing that material. They're taking, you're saying that flesh? They're, actually, they're actually synthetically making it, yep. yep. Interesting, yeah. that's so wild. It's so fascinating to me, all this stuff, because I think um, I, I just feel like there's so much that there is to learn out there about all this. But it doesn't it's not just for the sake of learning. It's almost for opening our, our minds in a way. I mean, it's really trippy stuff if you really talk about it. I mean, like stoners could sit around and talk about this all day. Sure they do. <laughs> you know, and but the thing is, is yeah. that it's real. Right. Like, that's the thing is that it's 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 really weird and it's really wooey. Yeah. But yep. it's real. And so that's what's so fascinating is that like we live on this ball or this like sphere, right? That's just floating in the middle of this like just space with billions of stars. And I always talk about this, but like the thing that keeps us alive is a star <laughs> that's like a ball of flames. Like it literally makes us have life. And then the thing that puts us to sleep is another sphere that also controls the waves. The consciousness of that is so wild to me that it almost makes everything else seem like in a way possible. I don't know. 
I don't know, because that's possible, you know? Um, I, I don't just, I don't know. I find it to be just like, I was really obsessed with Harry Potter growing up and like still am. I mean, it's not changed, but like, and like, like all that stuff, you know, and I, I really see it as kind of a, we're living in this magic book story. There's a lot of darkness that goes on. There's a lot of light that goes on, but it's, it is magic. I mean, it really is. It's really weird. I mean, at the end of the day, very few of us ever understand how our cell phones work, much less, you know, how to put a rocket into space. We're fine with the cell phone because we have it in our hands. But you're right. Most of this is would be indistinguishable from magic if we were to grab somebody from 100 years ago or 200 years ago. Like, if if we were to talk about any of this that we just yeah. talked about 200 oh, yeah. years ago, that would have been yeah. magic right. completely. And so I think a lot of this is like our perception of reality is like, yeah, this is like maybe not that big of a deal because it's space and who cares about space, but it's like, no, this is a big deal. Like this is our reality that we're talking about. This is like earth shattering, literally that this can even happen like in the first place. Well, right, right. No, and yet, so yeah, there is that on the one hand, well, people will be like, it's science fiction, cool. This will never really for real happen, which is kind of a similar thing to the internet. So do you envision a Jetsons-like future for this life that we live? Meaning, like we all know the Jetsons, right? Everybody's got their yeah. little pods, everybody's got their little space buildings, I guess, that they're in or whatever. Does that seem like a potential or probable life in like a thousand years maybe, or? I mean, so if we go back a thousand years, um, we were burning witches for giving us bubonic plague while we pet our little rat, um, and call it cute. We can do a lot in a thousand years. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Things change pretty fast. Things <laughs> evolve. Um, and like, we kept, we stayed pretty static from there until like 1800. Uh, so like 800 of those years were pretty static. Um, so like a thousand years, I'll, I don't know that we could recognize what a thousand years could look like, but I think within 20 to 30, you can expect tens of thousands of people to be living and working in space or the moon or elsewhere off planet. Like just the fact that we'll have a Hilton in space before 2030 is wild. So, all right, what's up with this Hilton thing? Because I've seen the pictures of it. I want to talk with them, actually. I'd love to talk with those guys. That was, so the Hilton is creating a spherical, or not a spherical, like a, but like a, a, a tire. I guess you, what? It's like yep. a giant tire, yeah. Type of yep. a hotel that because of the gravity and the momentum yep. that goes on, within that depending on which way you start spinning it'll continuously spin also that keeps you so grounded yes, right within live it. and walk on the outer rim of the inside rim of the tire okay so the rim is now where are the rooms if there's a rim that's like the walkway let's say i would imagine it's just one walkway essentially <laughs> yeah so what would be the outside exterior is would be the floor and the inner rim would be like the windows for the rooms because you'd be mm -hmm. basically walking along the outside edge. It, yeah, it gets trippy real fast. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. That's wild. And like on that, are they currently trying to build Yeah, so now? what they're doing is going to license multiple rooms off of one of the space stations that's going up. I believe it's Axiom's. Yeah, essentially they're going to license some of the space on this station to be official Hilton. I have not heard if you can use your Hilton points. Uh, I know, I mean, right? right? That'd be a freaking shame yeah. if you couldn't. Uh, They're going to have problem. to adjust their like reward categories. <laughs> Just gonna gonna, be yeah, that's going to be a real, it's a real bummer for you to be pissed. <laughs> uh, like okay. Or military discount or something. Like that. Something at least. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never had one of those, but I've, I've always thought that I should get one, and this there might go. get me there. There you go. <laughs> okay, so this flippin' Hilton Hotel is part of, like, your role right now is to make it possible for these kinds of things to exist. Not just a Hilton, right? But making it so that policy will allow for private business to thrive in space. Now, okay, do you foresee in this, you know, building policies, is a, it's a huge responsibility. This is something that's like, this is something that takes a lot of um, thought about what has happened, what's currently happening, what could happen. 
Um, there's a lot that's going on with mm-hmm. AI. There's a lot that's going on within, you know, society right now in general, just like becoming more aware of yeah. issues, social issues. In building policy, I imagine like you have to be aware of like the what you're making now, how AI could be involved in that. Is that something that you've been yeah, focusing on? And I mean, so, you know, beyond just AI, it's it's really how do you design a policy that may not change for 30 or 40 years? I can make this so mm-hmm. it still works when, you know, the, you know, our, the our kids are having kids. And yeah. um, because what we see all too often is once you get something changed or added into, into law, it's there for quite a while. And so when we're designing policies, we're really trying to make sure that it's a, it's a light touch, so to speak, that it is things that will... Um, you know, tax incentives that will pay for themselves that aren't necessarily targeted at helping, you know, the rich get richer, but are helping early stage companies and entrepreneurs pay for that risk they're taking. Um, Helping companies that are creating jobs in local areas pay for the additional training that's needed to to have these space, you know, capable workers. Rather right. than try to say, hey, we need to make a policy so that, you know, stoplights all face up and down in space. Like some of this needs to be figured out when we're actually there and doing it. But a lot of it we're trying to make sure is essentially evergreen and able to continue to work as things change. I, I am, you know, hyper aware of the fact that like at every stage America's you know done it wrong when we were were founded it was on the backs of slaves we're like ah dang it we did that wrong let's fix that and then we're like uh all right we fixed it except for you immigrants and women sorry uh sucks to be you then we fix that and we're like all right cool we got it and now we're like all right but except for you know the gays and uh sorry and so like we keep messing up we fix what we messed up and then we find out we've still messed something else up or you know it's still broken and so trying to figure out how do we make sure that we get it more right with space. Like, I'm a white dude yeah. with a beard. Like, space was made for me. Yeah. Like, everybody that's done space looks in some way, shape, or form like me. Uh, how do we make me the last white dude with a beard that gets involved in space for a while? Where are the women? Where are the minorities? Where are the people who look like the rest of the world? let's go to them and say, look, the, you, you can too. Like we need you. Like this is a thing. Um, and so like that, that has been something that's always at the front of my mind of where can we find these other voices, these other people who are going to bring their ideas. That's what we need. Right. Yeah. People who have different perspectives for sure. And, and they can bring, um, they can hopefully do, whoops, hopefully go away with, do away with the damage that was done yep. in the last 300, 400 years, um, at least here yep. in the States. So it's, and you know, it's interesting when you talk about AI too, because like that is a debate mm-hmm. in and of itself because the people who create AI have preconceived yep. Yep. notions of other people, right? And so it's complex. You might have somebody who on the surface is, <clears throat> quite yeah. fair and honest in this and that, but they subconsciously have mm, perceptions or beliefs or, you know, categorizations oh, yeah. of others that they don't yeah. even know. And they might be horrified <laughs> to find out that they do, um, but yeah. it's still there. Yeah. It's still embedded into it. And that's why a lot of people say, you know, say they're scared of AI and that we need to be careful. Um, I try to be polite and say, please keep me as a pet AI. Um, <laughs> Yeah, right. I know. I'm Let's very just polite be nice to, to Alexa each other, and uh, all of them. I won't have Alexa. She that <laughs> freaks me out. I can't do it. The phone thing is enough. Like I'll be talking for two minutes about a thing that I'm. I was texting my friend the other day about yep, her green yep. pants. It was a picture. It wasn't saying yeah, like yeah, these yeah. green exact pants. And then yesterday I got an ad for a company that were exactly yep. those green pants. It's just like 
I mean, I came from advertising. The last company I worked at, I ran the advertising network. So I get it. Like, I understand the value of advertising is, is huge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I got, I got it. But uh, it's also kind of like, oh, yeah, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa, you know, so it's, it's definitely um, something to think about for sure for defining policy, because policy defines people's realities. Yeah. That's what's so fascinating about it. It really is allowing people to, it's almost um, rules yeah, yeah. to which we can believe and think and then exist yep. within and and kind of predict oh, yeah. our futures in a way on the advertising thing there's there's been a couple um companies that have talked about doing like space billboards which a is gonna be really annoying if they ever pull it off <laughs> who's gonna see well, it's them? gonna be huge you can see them from the ground <laughs> yeah oh, yeah wait. you're saying yeah. from on earth all right, let's talk about that. That's just not I know, ridiculous. right? That's ridiculous. <laughs> there, they talked so like at South by there was like this drone constellation that made a QR code that when you scan the QR code, it rickrolled you. A great prank, absolutely phenomenal. I strongly support this. <laughs> but like, do that's what you know. Their, this company was talking about doing in space, basically a collection of drones that are lit up, and it creates an ad, and you know, the company pays for that basically space billboard for a certain amount of time. But like, holy shit, wow. wouldn't that be annoying? <laughs> yeah, that would be so, you would be like, suddenly see in this beautiful yep. night sky an exactly. ad for Nike? Yeah. No way. Oh, wow. that would be, that <laughs> yeah, is, right? holy shit. I'm good with that. They're gonna build that with that's, drones. That's the so how many idea people? is it would be this like drone swarm that like, can reorg, rearrange, change the light colors, and like how many drones are we talking? Oh, uh, like hundreds and thousands. Like yes, it's a lot for a damn ad. <laughs> um, <yep. laughs> okay, who was the first bid for that? Did they mention who wants to be involved? I don't know, but Nike's probably a good bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that was safe or maybe Coke, <laughs> something. Well, I mean, like making this Nike symbol, I feel like would be easy. Uh, it would be easy. That's true. It's just a swoosh. And of all the symbols in the sky, that would be the coolest one, honestly. Like if you're going to have an ad of any kind of one, if you're going to Nike's better than like, I don't know, like Dyson, like we talked about or something. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm thinking like what I want is one of those like Pepsi Super Bowl commercials displayed. Uh, from yeah. space. I want like Britney Spears video. Yeah. Oh, a... totally. That would, that would mean if you're going to do it again, you better go big. <laughs> and that, that actually reminds me, there was a, what's his face? Tom Cruise. Is it Tom Cruise? Who's coming up in space? He's, yeah. What do you know about this space um, studio? Cause I just want to know so much more about that. And of course it's Tom Cruise. Like, that's so funny. It would be him. I don't, I never figured, I never understood the hype around him. I'm sure he's a great guy, but I never understood the, like, the, the, the hype. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's, there's, he's, he's got a swagger. Um, and I'm told that's a, that's a, that's a thing. I guess he does. Yeah. So I, so from what I know, so Universal was backing the production. What I can't remember is, I, I thought for a while they were talking about it being like a Mission Impossible, um, mm. but I don't remember if that's true. I think that they that might be true because that would make so much sense. They never announced the name of the movie. They just announced that it was Tom Cruise. And, and he's like going to do okay. a spacewalk as part of it. And like he'll be the first civilian to ever do a spacewalk. And like, I, I guess he does his own stunts for a lot of things. Um, and so yeah. like, it's like wild. Now he's small, so he is a good actor to send up because it's like they pay per pound. He's little. Sending like <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson gets a lot more expensive. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely. Maybe that's why I always never understood the hype because I'm five eight, and I think and I think he's like five five eight or something like that. Uh, tops, with with the heels he wears, I think. Tops. Yeah, there's no. I don't think he's more than five eight. Like, yeah, maybe that's what it was because I was here. I am not like it. Short guys are dope too. I'm just tall. Five, five, seven, five, seven. Five, He's five, seven. seven. Damn. Yeah, I never understood it, but good on him. That's a good way to go. I mean, if you're going to be the first actor to do that, that's that's badass. 
Be travel size. Yeah, be bite size. Exactly. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so basically, right now, there's just tons of stuff going on up there. Um, that right, it seems like at this moment in time, we're in this process of building the infrastructure on Earth that yeah. can support the infrastructure on, let's say, yeah. the Moon and Mars or another planet. But it seems like just Mars is kind of the way right now. If we're gonna go. uh, at least for now, yeah. And they're building uh, what's called Gateway. I don't know if you know much about Gateway, the the the, the moon space station. Yeah, I mean, essentially, it's supposed to be a gas station on the way to the moon. Um, so it'll, oh, okay, the gas yeah. station. More, I guess, a rest stop would be more technically true. Um, there won't. Yeah. There may not necessarily be gas, but it'll be a place for the astronauts to like hang out, take a shower, okay. get some food before they go down to the moon. Yeah, a resting point. Okay, so with the moon, does your work involve talking, like, I, is that the first place that people are trying to colonize, is the moon? Uh, essentially, yeah. People got get antsy you when you know? say colonize. I still like using it, because it's like, it's technically true, guys. Like, <laughs> that's true, yeah, the word colonize, a right. little iffy. Yeah, you know, it, yeah, it wasn't the... so polite the last time. <laughs> this time, like, I mean, we're not taking it from anybody. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't know that, yeah, though. Fair. We don't know. That's we don't fair. know. We didn't think we, so. We, we, we may, we may not so be. In America. <laughs> yeah, but would the um, buildings on the moon be made of, let's say, concrete? for example, pulled from that like space industries Roomba looking thing? Yeah, that yeah. is the thought is that um, the yeah. concrete would be used to make buildings, um, landing pads, roads, um, as to like where exactly the people would live, there's, they're not sure. There's some discussion about putting it basically in underground caves um, to oh. keep it keep people safe from radiation you'd need less materials to make it uh so it'd be like mole people on the moon uh, yeah interesting so they'd live underground the radiation from, the, from yep. the sun you're saying coming at them because you can't live but i don't think that people could live on the shadowy side so maybe. Uh, you could it'd be hard most of the way we power things is solar power um and so you'd want to be somewhere that would be close um, to the sun, and even if you're out of direct line of sight of the sun, there is still radiation that's that's hitting there. And so, what um, a lot of the early designs for habitats involved basically some sort of shielding over the top uh, and building like burrows. Um, but there's some some people are theorizing that you could use these lava tubes. There's no lava anymore, but they used to be. Um, and, on the, moon on the moon and live inside mm -hmm. them um and so then you'd have you know 10 or 20 feet of lunar rock between you and the sun which is what you'd want to put anyway and so you just don't have to oh. add the, the roof that's so interesting so they found that there's lava, <laughs> tubes. Yeah. lava tubes lava tubes un in underneath like 20 yeah. feet below the yeah. surface of the moon so there was at one point lava or something that created uh, what looks like lava tubes. Yeah. Interesting. And that's just naturally occurring to according yeah. from what we know so far. And that's a place that potentially people yeah. could live in. We've done this on yeah. earth. There's a, I don't know if you've seen an ancient apocalypse that one with, um, was it something Phil Graham yeah, yeah. or something? Uh, Paul, Paul Graham, oh, yeah. but he goes in and he's, he, it's so good. He discovers all of these underground tunnels, yeah. basically, that humans really in intricately made and then like abandoned. Oh. Um, but it's not, and we yeah. don't know why they abandoned it. So it's like, what's going on there? But, um, you know, it's something that we've done before. So, okay, the vision is, okay, we have this gateway space station that's very close yep. to the moon. That's a stopping point for people who need to get to the moon to start stop there, and then they kind of eject that and go land on yep. the moon. And then if you're landing on the moon, we we in theory would have like roads and buildings if yep. we did have them made from concrete pulled from the yep. surface of the moon or something. And then <clears throat> the majority of the people though would likely live beneath yep. the surface. They're thinking right now because the radiation yep. is so powerful that they'd be yep. like mole people. Okay. And then the driving, is there a driving, like 
like drive you know a car like yeah. is that a thing um no so i think g uh gm is making the at least the tires if not the whole buggy for um the next iteration of the lunar rover um that astronauts are going to drive on the moon um so yeah no they look like giant dune buggies and so mm. we're, that's why we're trying to push policies here in the u.s that will be friendly towards that and help in encourage that because right now the u.s is the country that has the most satellites in orbit that launches the most things into space uh and looks most likely to be the one that leads this colonization slash transporting fancy monkeys to the moon Okay. God, imagine if, like, North Korea, they wouldn't ever, but, I mean, if they got there first, it'd be like, well, let's just avoid that place then. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, that's the movie we need to see, is North Korea beats us to space. <laughs> that would be, that would yeah. be something different. <laughs> God, uh, yeah, Joe Rogan had, I don't know if you listen to Joe Rogan, but he had, um, I can never remember her name, but she's amazing. She was a woman that escaped North Korea at like the age of 13. It was wild what they talked about, what they, and it goes back to what, why, what you're doing is so flipping valuable because the policies they had in place there, what they had going on there. I mean, it's literally reality defining, but there, there was so much lack of empathy and so much lack of love and understanding and humanity in that society that, I mean, God, like there, there, it, that can't, anything that's even semi close to that can't exist in space. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. Then it just perpetuates. <laughs> like the amount of suffering those systems perpetuate is staggering. We want to take our humanity with us. And that means we need the rest of us that have felt like we're not good enough, smart enough, whatever enough for space. And so whether that's an artist or a welder, like space is for you. Space is you, if you are interested in it, great. Your skills are almost guaranteed to be needed. Um, because at this point, there's just not enough people doing basically any job in space. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm with you. and. Uh, weirdly, I have that passion myself and I don't know why, but it just exists in me. <laughs> so hopefully this can bring that to more people too. Uh, cause I'm also passionate about the exact same thing. So super appreciate it, Tim. 